Now you tell me, which one of these scroll bars would you prefer? This big, ugly white one, or this nice branded one with a cool hover effect? Well, I'm going to show you how to customize and brand your own scroll bars in Blink and Safari-based browsers, and also in Firefox, because they are different in how they implement this. On top of that, I'll show you a gotcha you need to know for implementing this in Firefox on macOS. All right, let's jump right in. All right, so here we are, and you can see over here, I've got my mouse plugged in, so I'm getting this standard uh, scroll bar that shows over here on the right. Now, if I was on a mobile device or I was using a trackpad, then Chrome is a little more intelligent and it will actually try to hide this for you and kind of blend it into the background. But here, it's kind of an eyesore. So how can we fix this? Well, there is something called WebKit scroll bar, and this is a non-standard element, as you can see here, this non-standard feature, but it works for all Blink and WebKit browsers. So basically every browser but Firefox. So for not being standard, it is kind of standard, for lack of a better term. Well, here's what we can adjust with this standard. And then after I do that, I'll show you how Firefox works. Okay, so we've got WebKit scroll bar. This gives us access to the entire kind of backdrop of the scroll bar. Then we've got the other things I'm gonna show you here are the thumb, that's the actual thing you grab right here. The track, that's everything in the middle. And you can actually technically separate this from the background if you want to. There's the piece, and that is everything outside of the thumb. So it, it acts in a lot of way like the track, the way we'll be using it today. And then there's a couple other things. There's not a lot on these, so it's hard to find too much on them. And I'm not going to show you all these. I'll just stick to probably the scroll bar, the thumb, and the track. That should give us enough flexibility to do what we need to do. So let's come back up this way. And just below the body here, let's go ahead and add just on the HTML. Let's grab the WebKit scroll bar. Now here we can set a lot of different things. To start with, we could set some kind of a width. It might be tempting to do something like 10 pixels. Now when you do that, you'll notice that that little thumb actually disappears, the thing that you grab. And we'll have to actually add that back in manually now that we're adjusting the scroll bar to fit our needs. Now as tempting as that is to set it to something like 10 pixels, if somebody zooms in, you're gonna notice that that scroll bar changes as well. So it's better to set this to something else. So for instance, we might set this to like three view widths. Now that might be a little bit big, but you can see here now, if I go ahead and zoom in, that stays the exact same. And that's what we would want. Okay, so let's come back over here. Let's set this to two view width. I think that's about right for what I'm gonna want here. Then I'll set a background color on this entire thing and we'll set this to our var of dark. So there it is. Now it's blending in with the background. Now this is just a standard color, but I do have another variable called var of background. If I come up here, you'll see that this is a linear gradient, which means I would need to set this on the background. And you can actually do that here. So I can say background like this. And now technically this starts with the background up here, real dark, and then it's gonna change colors as you go all the way down. All that to say you can add gradients or just standard colors. All right, next, let's go ahead and copy this down and let's now look at the track itself. I'm gonna add just track after this. And now you'll notice something. If I come in here and change this to something like my accent, and let's get rid of this width right here, you're gonna notice that that takes up that entire space. But like I said, you can technically separate this from this WebKit scroll bar background. So I could say something like margin, like two rem and zero. You'll notice that it pulls up on the top and the bottom, and now it's separate from the background which would mean if I didn't have a background color here, I'd have white, which that looks even worse than before. So let's do something like that. And in fact, instead of doing margin like this, let's just do margin block. We'll do 0.5 rem. And now let's set a border radius here and we'll do something like 10 rem. And that gives me a nice little pill shape. If you wanna make sure it's always a pill, you can do 100 view width. That's a way to consistently get that pill shape. And I'm gonna come back up here and change this to my background. Now let's add in that little thumb so we can see where to grab and hold and scroll the page. So instead of track, I'm gonna say thumb. We'll keep the same border radius. We won't have a margin block. And I'm gonna change this to a border. So we'll do border, how about 0.5 view width. So again, it scales with the size of the screen. This will be solid and my var of light. Now you can see there it shows up for me and I can come over here and grab it and move it along and it actually scrolls with the page. I have this set to light because I want to transition to this accent color whenever I come over to hover. So it's just slightly less obtrusive right now. When I come over to hover, then I definitely want to grab it and scroll. I'll change it to this accent color. And you can do that just like this. So I'd come in here and add a hover pseudo class. Let's just change the border color here to var of accent. And I can also get rid of this border radius 
And let's come over here. And now you see when I hover, that changes for me. Now let's actually add back in one more thing. And this would be a background color. Now I come over here and when I hover, it shows that accent color for the entire thing, including the border. Now, if I wanted to, I could change this. Maybe let's change this to the dark. And now it kind of inverts when I come here. So you see it actually is inside that track. So it just depends what you might like. I think I'm going to keep it at the accent. Unfortunately, you can't transition between these. So if you did like transition uh, 250 milliseconds ease or something like that, uh, it's not going to do anything. It just snaps straight to that, at least in Chrome. All right, so let's go ahead and kill this since it doesn't work anyhow. And now it's time to look at Firefox. Now, I showed you up here that this says that it is non-standard. And the standard one is scroll bar color and scroll bar width. Those are technically the only two in the standard, and Firefox is the only one to implement this. So let's start with scroll bar width. And you're going to notice here that we have just three options. None, that removes it altogether. Thin, which lets the browser choose a thinner scroll bar, or auto, which is the normal one. So not a lot of options here for us, but let's come in here and let's just set this inside the HTML. This is a property, not some kind of pseudo selector here. And that means I can set it just like a property. So I'll say scroll bar width, and let's set this to thin. If I jump over here on the other screen, I've got Firefox open, and you can see here it is this little thin scroll bar versus the auto, and I'll move it to auto now. Jump back over here, and you can see that it's the standard size. So that's your only real option for scroll bar width. If I come back over here, the other standard one is the scroll bar color. Now here you get to set the thumb and the track, those two things only. And you can see if you leave it at auto, that's just the standard one, or you can give it your own colors here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna copy this down and I'll say color, and let's change this to our var accent or our var of dark. Now, if I come back over this way, here we go. We've got both of those here. I don't have any other customizations I can do. Now, I do get a nice little pill shape because that's the default anyhow, but I can't adjust that in any way in Firefox. Now, I mentioned that at least in Mac OS, there's a little bit of a gotcha when it comes to Firefox. If I remove my mouse and go back to my trackpad on my laptop, here's what it looks like. On the one hand, you say, well, that's really nice. It kind of disappears for me automatically, but so do all my customizations. Now, the only way someone's going to see your customizations on their Mac if they're using a trackpad is if they happen to have a default setting changed. If I come here to my general settings, you're going to see that I can always allow the scroll bar to show. That means if I come back this way, now those default settings show. Now, of course, in the mouse, they show either way, but that's just something to be aware of. Now, the other thing to note is if I come over here in Chrome, my customizations show whether I'm on a trackpad or with a mouse. But I've got one other thing I need to pay attention to, and this goes across all browsers. If I'm on a trackpad and I start to pull up, I get this nasty little <laughs> white background. And now that my scroll bar is dark, that just looks extra gross. Thankfully, we can change that with one line of CSS. Let's come back up to our body, and I can decide what the overscroll behavior is, and I can do it in the X or Y axis. Let's do the Y axis here, and we will set this to none. Now, if I come back over this way, I can't actually pull up. When I try, it just locks me right in there. So that's a nice little tip to know that if you're using a trackpad or an iOS device and you're pulling on that screen, you're going to get that nasty white background unless you set this over scroll behavior Y to none. Well, now you know how to use the WebKit prefix in Chrome and Safari, and then how also to create a backup for the albeit specced out version in Firefox. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.